everyone. Hey, good afternoon. This is Lee Iben with Action Coach Campus, and this is another episode of Business Basics. Our guest this afternoon is Tom Nicknish with Viv Ed Learning. Welcome, Tom. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. Appreciate good, you having good. me on. Oh, yeah. Tell me. So, Viv Ed, what is Viv Ed? So VivEd's been around for, for some time. Uh, it originally started as Cyber Anatomy. We had mm -hmm. an anatomy software that we had created uh, in 2007. And that sort of spawned the company in about 2010. We uh, got past human anatomy into uh, frog and pig dissection and things of that nature that got us into the K-12 classroom. Right. And now we have three main products. So VivEd Anatomy, science and uh, just recently in the last couple of years we, we launched a chemistry solution so so this this is exciting though I mean I mean how how does the student interact with your product the student can utilize our solutions in a, in a number of ways really there's a stereoscopic 3d version that is uh, projected driven mostly by the uh, instructor that would be an in, in classroom solution Okay. We have a web-based online version, okay. and we have another in-class solution that is driven by the ZSpace solution. All right. And ZSpace is designed to do also a, a sort of a stereo 3D approach utilizing a, uh, a stylus and a 3D monitor. Okay, you're losing me here, man. This sounds cool. To, 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 <laughs> all right, so tell me, tell me about the big projection thing. How does, what does that look like, feel like? Sure. Yeah. So the, the typical setup there is a, a 14 foot screen in front of the classroom uh, projector on the ceiling. That projector also has capability of, of presenting the objects in 3D, which basically means a double image. Okay. And you combine those images with a set of 3D glasses. And so each student would have 3D glasses on and they'd be able to see it. Oh, that's wild. That is, that is cool. I mean, you're like, you're like living in the space, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty so, much. so rather than, rather than using the, these, these 3D goggles for gaming, we can actually learn something. Correct. Yeah. That's the idea is that, you know, try and meet kids where they're at. They, they obviously enjoy games. They enjoy the interactivity. Heck, even as a parent, I, I enjoy all of the above. So Right. It's a great way to learn. Uh, you're seeing this transition into the corporate setting as well. And so, as you can imagine, we're getting more and more interest from corporate training and, and things of that nature as well. So. Right. Now, R&D, you develop the products. Do you develop them locally or do you work with companies globally? How does that come about? R&D happens, uh, basically, a, a customer would come to us. Uh, and that customer, because we are B2B, is mm -hmm. typically not necessarily the student or the teacher. It's another organization. So right. we partner today with uh, McGraw-Hill, okay. Cindy H. Gale, some of the uh, largest publishing companies in the world uh, for education. Gotcha. Uh, Elsevier is another one. They're really big in the anatomy space. Um, and when they come to us, they, they have an idea for, in the case of El Elsevier, they wanted an online uh, version of their netter solution mm -hmm. and okay. so there's a website out there netter3danatomy.com and that hosts uh, a set of anatomy that is specific to to netter frank netter was a very famous um, artist who has done illustrations of the entire human body and so okay. we take renditions of those and we marry those with uh, the 3d anatomy that we've created and so when it, when you see it on the surface, it just, it almost looks real, right? So how cool is that? that yeah. That's gonna take some time to put that together, doesn't it? Years, years, yeah. We're, we're about 10 years in on the, the solution for, well, 13 years really for anatomy. And I would say there's, there's at least five to six years there of, of development and tweaks and, and whatnot. So it doesn't, now, doesn't happen overnight. No, it does not. It, it, well, in any business for that matter, it takes a while to grow. It's more like running a marathon than a, than a sprint. But um, I think the last time I saw your, your software in operation was with the projection. And you have the option of having the, the descriptors attached or not attached mm -hmm. for, 
for the learning environment. So if, a, if an instructor wants to introduce them to it, they, they can learn the layers by name or they can opt to take those layers away. Um, Correct. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So there's, there's an assessment component built in and you can either enable or disable the labels, I think is what you're, you're alluding to. And that right. ultimately will allow the, the student to do self-discovery, you know, to really try and learn the parts themselves or with the enabled labels, right? You can see every aspect and, and you know, gain understanding that way. Right. And your, your target market, right? Your audience, your, your end user audience would, would be from what level to what level? Uh, I usually say right now our target is, is about third grade is where we begin to pick up. Okay. Uh, a lot of the school districts that we work with today, there's, we're impacting close to a million students in about uh, a thousand school districts today. Mm -hmm. And that's just in the U.S. and beyond, you know, probably another, I would say, 100 to 200 schools uh, around the world as well. And, and with that, I would say we start, again, at about grade three, go all the way through to medical school when it comes to the anatomy product. And even beyond, again, the, the training corporate aspect is starting to kick in. So those That's are really exciting. our targets. I would say our sweet spot right now is, is middle school, yep. especially when it comes to our science product, which currently has the most uh, adoption or uptick at this point. So with the pandemic, um, is that going to be, um, it's a, a good thing for online learning mm -hmm. and, and your, your product would dovetail nicely into that. Yeah. Yeah. So we, as a team spent really the last three years developing online solutions. The first pass we made was with, uh, Cengage Gale and the, again, a major education publisher, top three in the world. And, um, we developed a whole solution utilizing uh, the Unity 3D gaming platform. Mm -hmm. And what we found was that there were enough tweaks that we needed to make that we just completely rewrote the engine over the last year. <laughs> wow. We wanted to make it faster. We wanted to make it more accessible. Um, we wanted to get into more uh, environments. And now with our new solution, uh, WebGL, Babylon JS from from Microsoft, we can hit now the Chromebooks, we can hit iPhones, we can hit um, even the VR devices once we do a, a, a tweak or two with what they call web XR. So mm -hmm. with some of these newer web based technologies, we can provide our solutions in a, in a way that we've never done before, and we can gain access to way more students. So really that's, that's, nice. yeah, that's excellent. And, and, and Tom, your 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 office, you're not in a traditional office setting. I mean, you, you guys are probably, I mean, your, your team, right? Your development guys, your marketing, you, uh, sales, you guys are all over the U.S., correct? Or, or further? Correct. Yep. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, we have gone further um, with some of our major projects. We've gone as far as uh, we had a team out of Buenos Aires, uh, Argentina. We had another team out of the Ukraine. Um, in the past, but right now my core team is is seven individuals, including myself, and then our CEO is a member of the University of Iowa, and so he uh, works, you know, faculty position there, and and okay. is helping us on the the side, I would say, right. and uh, basically our team right now is in California, Colorado, Texas, and Iowa, and so. Wow. We're, we're spread out. Our, the one thing that keeps us together in terms of virtual um, teamwork is, is an 11 o'clock stand up every day, central time. So that really helps. <laughs> I bet it does. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and do you guys get together once a week virtually zoom? Um, yeah. Yeah. So we, essentially we're, we're always on that 11 o'clock stand up every morning and then right. we have one off meetings, uh, at, you know, throughout the day. And then typically at the end of the week, it's, you know, where do we get, where do we want to go? And right. And it all starts over again on Mondays. So. Yeah. That's exciting though, wasn't it? I, I, yeah. I mean, if, if you would have 
told us 20 years ago that we'd be working like this, uh, we, we would have, our heads would have been spinning, I think. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's, it's pretty wild. I, I had some experience with working from home, but virtually working, I would say is different, you know, so working from home to me in the past was in sales positions where, you know, the bat phone rings and you got to fly somewhere. Now right. it's, it's, you know, really, there's not much flight happening. <laughs> so it's, no. it's really just, you know, taking zoom calls and, and really trying to develop relationships virtually. So. Oh, definitely. So tell me, you've been doing this for 13 years now with VivEd. Uh, tell me some of the learnings that you can share with others. What, what's, what, what have you picked up? What's some advice that you can give? Yeah, I, I would say, you know, especially with some of the development work we've been doing, the, just the number of questions I wish we would have asked, you know, for example, three to four years ago in regards to what's important, what's most important for the end user, the student. Um, had we asked some of those questions at a deeper level, um, maybe three, four years ago, I think we would have, we would have been able to, to be out even further in front of, of, an, of our audience. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I, you can't go back, but you can definitely learn from those sort of things is just the more questions you can ask, the better you can, uh, try to realize or understand the problem that you're trying to solve is is super critical so i would say for the last year that's really been a core component for us is you know what problem are we tra trying to solve and for which partnership because again there's there's about five or six partnerships that we work with on a day-to-day -day basis right now sure and so you can imagine at any given week we're we're dedicating resources uh to one of those projects so right trying to right. keep it all in line is is always fun and, and assume nothing and ask more questions, right? Always. Yep. Always. <laughs> Always. <laughs> um, so tell me, what's, uh, we'll wrap this up, but tell me what's inspiring to you. What gets you out of bed every morning? What is it that sure. you love? Yeah, I mean, yeah. right, right now, especially, we're, I feel like we're really developing finally a, a solution or a platform. And I think that's really the first time we've ever gone down that route. You know, previous to this, we were creating products, installable products more times than not. So mm -hmm. we were putting uh, our software onto a person's uh, device of some sort. And today with the web-based solution that we're developing, it's really more of a, a platform. So we're trying to develop a way for individuals, whether they're teachers or instructors or trainers or whatnot to create 3D stories using mm -hmm. our presentation platform. Okay. And so I think that's a big, big change from what we were doing previously, again, with the products. Um, so now we hope that the products can become a number of categories. I mean, just as an example, we're hoping in the next few weeks to, to release a whole new solution for construction. Mm -hmm. So CTE is another new space for us. We're getting past STEM and we're getting into the career and tech ed space. Right. Um, you know, beyond that, cybersecurity is another one that we're looking at. Uh, we are looking again at the training side of things. And so you can imagine uh, medical device organizations leveraging our anatomy as part of, you know, maybe a learning tool in conjunction with their device, um, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, we're also trying to marry up with, uh, organizations like humanize my hoodie on the fashion side of things. So taking okay. the, uh, the human being as a, as a, as a tool to maybe sell or market solutions for the fashion industry, for, for example, anything that we can touch that makes more sense to the end user in 3d space right. is, is a, is a perfect target for us. You know, and you touched on it too, Tom, it's um, as business owners, we sometimes just get, get locked and loaded in a mindset. And we sometimes have got to take a step back or a mile step back and change our vantage point and say, really, what are we doing? And mm -hmm. then, and then all of a sudden these other opportunities begin to present themselves. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, really, the, that's a really great point because this whole summer has been dedicated to that. It's, you know, let's take five or six partnerships that are new to us and really try to knock it out of the park with each one. 
Right. And then it'll expose all these other opportunities. And I, I think it's starting to come to fruition. So, Oh, I, I, I think you're right on the precipice of, of this thing just blowing up, which is fantastic. That's great. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Hey, don't go away. So, hey, my guest this afternoon has been Tom Nicknish. This has been another episode um, of Business Basics with VivEd Learning, an exciting company. And, and get in touch with Tom if you want to know more about it. Tom, thank you for joining us this afternoon. No, thank you, Lee. I really appreciate the opportunity and I appreciate everything you guys are doing at Action Coach. Appreciate it. Oh, thanks. Yeah, no problem.